Hi, this is Emma, and welcome to Esoteric Detective. I found this video on the internet, and have been doing a lot of research into human memory lately. Trying to explain the Mandela effect, using known scientific models. That is, testable effects by experimentation. I don't know what the Mandela effect is. There are many things of course, that it could be. It is really hard to say. But I think it is important, for those people who believe reality is shifting, to provide the alternative view. And I guess, that would be the mainstream point of view, from an academic environment. An environment that works with scientific models into human memory and psychology. I do this. Because it is important for me, to provide both sides of an argument, and let you, the viewers decide. And I have noticed, that in most of my videos, I have not expanded on the fact of false memories, possibly as much as I should have. Anyway, I found this video really interesting. To me, it still is hard to work my mind around all this as possible false memories. But then again, I have not looked into this at length. Which I will, and will make a longer video on. And in the words of Einstein, condemnation, without investigation, is the height of all ignorance. So, we should all investigate first, then make our judgments later. Could it be false memories? Take this video for what it is. A different point of view. And more information to use in order to gain a better understanding of the world we live in. Let's take a look. It's a hot summer's day. You're eight years old and you're excited. It's the first time you've been up in a hot air balloon. You can see fields below. You feel the heat of the flame. It's something you'll never forget, a memory to last a lifetime. It's certainly not something you'd think you'd done if it had never happened. Psychologists at Victoria University in Wellington are finding out just how easy it is to implant false memories using digitally altered photographs. There's nothing sinister about what they're trying to do. They're just trying to get to the bottom of how memory works. It's the first time anyone's investigated the power that digital technology has to change what we remember. And the results are remarkable. It seems like the stuff of science fiction. 30 students are shown pictures of their childhood in a study they believe is about how we reminisce. In fact, it's testing how vulnerable their memories are. This is Jessica. It's day one of the experiment. When she's first shown the fake photo of her hot air balloon ride, unsurprisingly, she has no memory of it. Can you tell me everything you can recall about that event. <laughs> I don't know what by the end of the week, she believes she's been in a hot air balloon, but the psychologist knows it's something she's never done. I think I walked on. On the platform. In fact, she's being deliberately tricked. What we've been doing is uh, showing people a selection of photographs from their childhood. Four photographs. Three of them are true, and one of them is fake. So the third photograph in the booklet always depicts a subject and another family member taking a hot air balloon ride. But they've never actually been on that ride? No. No, we know that for a fact. We interview them three times over the course of a week, and by the time they get to the third interview, just a week later, half of them, 50% of our sample, believes they've been on a hot air balloon ride. 50% is much higher than Marianne Gary and her team ever expected. Even the students that don't remember the hot air balloon ride believe the photos are real. We ask family members to give us a photo of the subject that shows the subject clearly from the waist up and hopefully standing next to another family member. So we get a photograph that looks something like this. And we remove everything around that we don't want. We just grab them here and copy them over and suddenly they're in the picture. A bit big at the moment, aren't they? They won't quite fit in the hot air balloon. They're a bit big, so we have to transform them, make them smaller and make them fit. So we end up with something like that. That looks fantastic. They really look like they're in there. Over the course of the week, subjects are asked not to speak to their family about the study. 
Kim asks them to think about the photos every night. By the third interview, their imaginations are starting to fill in the detail. Pitch myself walking onto the balloon as if I was actually there. Um, and I ended up getting a picture of some kind of platform. I remember looking up at the gas and the balloon proper. So I just sort of remembered stuff like that. And also looking down at sort of the patchwork on the ground because we were quite high up. Contrary to what we believe, memory does not work like a tape recorder. Our memories are not recorded and stored faithfully in the back of our heads and then played back like, a, like on a video recorder. Memories aren't permanent. They're, they're a reconstruction, a blend of, of imagination and fantasy and things that you might hear about or think about afterwards and, and also, a, like in our case, a photograph. What kind of implications does this have? One of the implications is that uh, if you remember something and you report it with great confidence, great detail, and it's very vivid and clear, got a lot of emotion, it doesn't necessarily mean it really happened. What kind of reaction do you get from people when you tell them this event didn't happen at the end of the week? Uh, surprise, especially if they believe the event happened. Uh, they're also quite scared. Because people, they have a lot of faith in their memories. They think as a child, um, as an adult, they can remember their childhood quite clearly. And it's a big wake up call when suddenly they realise their memory's not that reliable. One of the four photos we discussed didn't actually occur. So one of them didn't happen. You know which one that is? Um, yeah, the balloon one. Yeah. It's scary, really. Um, a hot air balloon ride is not something you'd easily forget. What do you guys think? Do you think it could be false memories that is causing the Mandela effect? Or do you think that the Mandela effect is something far more different? And that it might be evidence of some kind of shirt in our realities? Stay tuned and subscribe to Esoteric Detective to keep up to date with the strange and unusual. And please give a thumbs up if you liked the video. And do let me know what you think in the comments section. Until next time, goodbye.